1965 Admiral Color Combo Unit, AM FM Phonograph. We've already restored the TV on this in previous videos. I recapped the tuner and amp on this already. I don't think I made a video on it. But it has an interesting problem that I thought we should cover in a video, which is over the course of several hours, the right channel loses gain or gets quieter. You can see how the balance is tipped towards the right. Well, that sounds about balanced after it's run for five hours. If you turn it on cold, it's, you'll end up with the balance right in the middle. So something happens over the course of warming up or a long run uh, where the right fades out. And I thought that might be an interesting diagnosis, diagnostic video. Also, the left channel has a lot of hiss, like a bad germanium transistor. I'm going to hook a signal generator to this and two voltmeters so we can monitor it. I have a voltmeter across each speaker. I'm going to be feeding one kilohertz from a signal generator or function generator into both channels equally. And actually, when I first turned it on, this one was real low. It was like 200 millivolts, and then it slowly came up over the course of about 30 seconds. So I'm going to balance this out. That right there is with the balance in the middle. So it's still leaning to the left. Oh God, I better be careful about saying that. So I'm gonna adjust them even, and then we'll come back to this later and see what happens. I'm not, I'm gonna let it play music, but We'll let it warm up, then come back to this later. Okay, so that's where I'm at with the balance. Right there is even. You can hear all the noise in this channel. Of course it stops. I have them adjusted for one volt. The set has been on for about six hours and you can see what's happened here. We're still at one volt on the left. We've dropped to uh, 489 millivolts on the right. So the right is, is now half of the left. So interesting, that's not the case at lower frequencies. That's a real ear burner, 12 kilohertz, boy that's painful, 13.17, I can still hear it, but so it flips. So it, right now it drops off real fast at uh, 400 hertz. See that? At uh, 150 hertz it's actually higher. So it's all in the high, well. I got the Admiral unit here out on the uh, bench and 
the last time I worked on it, I totally recapped it. Well, not totally. Uh, all of these main capacitors I changed with the best niche cons there were. I didn't change some of these smaller ones because they all tested good. That might have changed. I directly connected, meaning soldered, to the back of the speaker connector two 8 ohm 1% resistors. 25 watts, although this thing I don't think puts out, but maybe 4 or 5 watts per channel. We will figure that out. The first thing I want to do is feed a 1 kilohertz tone into it and see what the clipping point is with the scope and see if it's even on both channels. Okay, on the first channel, this is the left. I should be doing both channels at once, but you can see it starts to clip on the top first. And so it's it, it puts out about 11.2 volts and it starts to clip right there so it right about 11.5 volts it starts to clip. Okay, let's ch let's check out and it, interesting that's uh Thirty volts peak to peak. Okay, let's look at the other side. Okay, here's the other side, and this seems like it has far less overall gain. So look at how the bottom starts to go clinky dinkler. So this one starts to clip about the same, except that oscillation at the bottom. It's very odd. About the same. Starts to clip at about well, it doesn't start to clip until there, but it's got that really nasty oscillation in the bottom. Yeah, that, that weird oscillation, I have no idea what that would be. Right now with both right and left bridged together equal resistors, balance control straight in the middle. I have on the right side, I have, uh, let me see, that's, I have two volts on the right side. I have three volts on the left side. So we need to find out where this inequity is coming from. Because when things are not in equal when things are not equal there's in there's inequity and to have equity things have to be equal. And climate change will Okay, here's the very first stage. Actually, no. This is the very first stage. Stand by. Okay, well, I was probing the second stage there, which the inequity exists there, because if I go to the collector of one, I have peak-to-peak uh, peak 0.25. If I go to the collector of the other, I have peak-to-peak peak 0.39. So the inequity... It's going to be our word of the day. Already exists. Now that's the second stage. The first stage are these little epoxy domes right here, which everybody who watches my videos know how much knows how much I just absolutely love these. So let's check these. 
So that's the epoxy dome right there. NPN. And then it goes from the epoxy dome into the volume control. And this is where we were just measuring it. So let's compare these right here. We also got one channel that's super noisy and one channel that's not. Maybe the channel that's super noisy is like too much, but I don't know. The volume seems to fade as it warms up. So let's check these, compare these. Well, on the first one, we have a big signal on the collector, 2.4 volts, 2.45 volts. On the other one, we have a smaller signal, 2.13 volts. So again, on this 2.2 volts on this one, and... Two, two volts even on this one. Now that doesn't seem like that big of a difference. But there is a difference there. Uh, let's try one more experiment. Let me get a speaker. Now you can hear the noise here. And the noise is unaffected by the volume control. So the noise is coming from something that's wrong after the volume control. Now the channel that's noisy also is the one that's louder consistently. So if I take this capacitor and I go from collector to ground, pulling all the AC off, it completely shuts it up. It's before the driver. Now if I come back here and go from collector to ground, it quiets it down quite a bit. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go from collector to ground through the capacitor here. You can hear that. Then on this one, if I go from collector to ground, it largely shuts it up. So it's like both of those are noisy. And we got a problem back here. But there's no noise at all on this side. It's weird. I know I'm jumping around here, but I'm back on the, the very first transistors. And I'm checking the base. That's where the signal comes in. So on that one I have... 204 on this one I have 2.02 so the signal size going into these is exactly the same why not coming out well there are emitter capacitors it's like a feedback thing let's compare the two emitters Maybe one of these capacitors. I took and jumped the two collectors of those two first stage transistors together. And that brought the inequity a tad closer. But when I say a tad, I, I mean just barely anything. We're still way off. And yeah, the hotter it gets, the worse it seems to be getting. Because now, now that it's been running for a while, we are at... We're at one volt on the right, and we are at two volts on the left. So it's not entirely all in this stage. It's got to be uh, something, maybe, maybe this transistor that's got noisy has gone up in beta. Maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way. Maybe, I don't know though, it goes down as it warms up. Let's see. I just accidentally noticed something. Uh, this transistor is burning hot. Is 
these these should not there should be no heat here this transistor ow damn that thing is hot and this is the channel that's loud so this is the channel with this hot transistor that is noisy this is the channel that's hyperactive noisy and louder than the other channel but the other channel seems to get weaker as it warms up but maybe this thing's pulling the voltage down i don't know okay so you should have done your research before you made the video kid uh this is the driver transistor it's red hot this is the other driver transistor it's red hot so i started following this back so this is the driver that drives the transformer that drives the output transistors this is the amp transistor that feeds through this capacitor into the driver this is the preamp transistor that drives through this into this and then these over here are the input transistors so it goes from here to here to here to here to here okay i can ground through the capacitor all the way back to the collector here and it cuts down the noise so i think what needs to happen is this transistor needs to come out first because the noise is very noticeable on the scope so this is the collector of the driver transistor look at the noise and that does not exist at all over here so i think we should attack the noise first so like i thought we have two problems one is a noisy channel a noisy transistor and the other is low signal so how do i explain this how do i it's just confusing these are the first two transistors the black dome ones these are the second two this one is the noisy channel this one is the low channel the sine wave on the collector of this one is bigger than the sine wave on the collector of this one so that's counterintuitive right you would think this being the low channel it would be lower than this one but no it's it's higher so i go to the next transistor down the chain which is this one this one the sine wave is bigger than the sine wave on this one which is the second one. Where is it? Right there. Right here. So there is a capacitor between these two. Uh, it's possible that the capacitor is open, so that would make the sine wave bigger here because there would be no load on it, right? Uh, the capacitor couples the AC to the next transistor, so if the capacitor was leaky, was open, it would it would yield a, a stronger signal here so i think we should check that capacitor it's like under down under here okay i'm checking all these capacitors that i did not change and who would have ever thought capacitors from 1967 would go bad i mean that's not old for electrolytic capacitors so this blue one is completely dead. And I don't know if that's maybe the one creating the hiss. Because that's sort of in a feedback loop. And capacitors can change when they get hot and cold. So maybe that would make sense why uh, they do that. Why we do see that change. So I think before I waste anybody else's more time, any more time, I need to just get a bunch of 10 microfarad capacitors and change all of these. Yeah, just change them all. There's like four, five, or eight, I don't know. And they're going to be a pain, but just, just change them all. Well, I changed the two capacitors in the little feedback tone circuit that one of them was open. 
the one on the on the the side that was noisy was open so I changed those two now it's flipped now the left side is lower than the right side so that's what I was seeing with the scope all the capacitors have been changed all of them and um, now for it to be even it's leaning the other way it's leaning towards the left now the right channel is stronger we still have the noise on the left channel but it's not nearly as loud but it's still there now we've got 1.2 on the left and 2.1 on the right so see it's flipped this is going to be a transistor problem and probably something to do with the noisy transistor I'm going to probe the base and the collector on those two transistors right there so this is I don't know, I constantly get these confused. This is the channel. Uh, hold on. This is the channel that is now louder. Stand by, let me verify. Okay, yes, this is the channel that is now louder. So we have 0 0.10 in. Yeah, point. We'll just say round it up to 0.1 in, and we have 0.56 out. This is the channel that was louder. This is the channel that was louder and noisy and now is still slightly noisy and is softer. 0.11 in point three four out. So we have a substantial substantially less gain in this transistor than this transistor. Lower input, higher output, higher input, lower output. Less gain. And that's the noisy one. If I take and shunt that thing to ground through this capacitor on the base, I still get the noise. See if it, you can hear it. If I shunt the collector to ground, the noise completely goes away. That transistor right there is defective. Well, this is interesting. This is the transistor that I took out that I'm accusing of being noisy. And that is not a germanium transistor. Well, this is interesting. These are not germanium transistors. The schematic shows them all with about a 0.2 volt drop, and they're not. They're 0.6 volts. So no wonder why they can run so damn hot and not fry. I pretty much confirmed it's that transistor because I got it powered up. And the noise floor is so low now, I have to hold the speaker up to my ear, and it's almost exactly the same as the other channel. So I just need to find an NPN transistor that'll work. I'm sorry, a PNP silicon transistor that'll work there. I dug a germanium out, uh, but sadly it's not germanium. Well, maybe not sadly. I'm going to try this. I want something that's legit and not going to fail. Well, that did not fix it. I still have the same symptom. I have noise. And the volume control is before this. So when I turn the volume control down, and I have low gain, the same, almost the same numbers. 
and I just checked the emitter is a little bit higher of a signal on that transistor than the other one. Maybe the emitter resistor is bad. Okay, this is the emitter on the one that's working good. That was originally low and now is working good. This is the emitter on the one that's I just replaced and you can see that signals better what did the re emitter resistor go up in value is that the whole problem because that would cause the base voltage to be higher too let's do some DC voltage checks comparison this is the emitter on uh, the one that's working right okay 0.46 this is the emitter on the one I just replaced did the emitter resistor go high, causing low gain? This is a collector on the one that's working right. This is the collector on the new one that's still not working right. Certainly looks like the emitter resistor went up. If it has an emitter resistor, let me check this. There are the two emitter resistors right there. What is that? Blue, gray, black. 680. This is the bad one, 1.5K. This is the good one. Well, okay, bad resistor. The 680 ohm emitter resistor on the low channel is measuring 1.587k and I bet that's where the noise is coming from too. I bet that resistor has got a crack or something in it and it's just noisy. This is an RN 61% resistor. I'm going to replace it with. It's 681 ohms. It's measuring 681 ohms. Yes, that is a quarter watt resistor where the carbon one is a half, but I did the math on this and it's uh, much lower than, it's like a hundredth of a watt. It's like one volt drop across 680 ohms. Anyway, now we flipped back around again. So now this is the uh, channel that was low before. And this is the channel that was noisy and high, but then came down. So it's flipped back to where it was when we originally started. So that could be maybe that new transistor I put in there. Let me put the old transistor back in. We're flip-flopping here. I'm not looking for perfection, but I'd like it to be within 100 millivolts, not a half a volt. This is the emitter resistor we replaced that had doubled in value. It's the resistor for this transistor. This is the emitter transistor for this transistor. This is the transistor we took out and replaced with the little black one. Um, now at this point this channel has more gain than this channel so we flipped back to how it was originally um, I've taken the time to I, I measured all the DC voltages this is the one with low gain this is the one with the new resistor this one has the new resistor Okay, so obviously this one has got more bias turning it on. Because as you increase this voltage, you the transistor conducts more, so it pulls this down and pulls this up. Right? Because you're you're feeding this goes up, it starts feeding more electrons through, and then this voltage goes up and this one goes down. So obviously this one is looks like it's turned on harder, 1.2 to 1.05. And the, yeah, I could measure it on the other side of the emitter resistor too. I measured it from ground. So that's that's this drop across here is the bias. 
this plus this would equal the bias, which is 1.2, which is really 1.2 minus 5, 0.585. I checked all the bias resistors and the, I want to say the plate resistors, but the uh, collector resistors, and they're all within close to each other. The next thing I'm going to do is bridge the two outputs of the balance control together just so we can verify if it's the signal coming into the two transistors will make that equal. And then we can see if it's a gain difference between the two transistors or if it's the signal going in from the previous stage. I literally tacked a wire across the balance control. So now the signal level going into those two transistors should be exactly the same. Okay, well this is interesting. Now we have uh, 1.330 on one channel and 1.314 on the other channel. That's what I want to see. So what I did was I equalized the signal going into those two transistors. See those two green disk capacitors? Those are what the signal comes through. So now the problem is before that. So now I need to start looking maybe back here. Or maybe it's a inequity in the volume or balance control. Okay, now I'm back to the previous stage and I removed the jumper. So on the collector of this transistor, we have a nice reflection. 4.30 .4 on the collector of this transistor, we have 4.95. So that there's our inequity now. We've moved back a stage. So why? Let me check the bases. And the base of this one, we have 2.97. On the collector, we have 4.30. On the base of this one, we have hard to reach. Two point nine seven on the collector, we have four point nine zero. So we have more gain in, we have, I, I don't even know anymore, we have more gain in this one, or too much gain in this one, or not enough gain in this one, I don't even know anymore. This one is not performing as well as this one. I actually like the lo-fi sound of the radio TV phone on that old camera. I don't know. I, I It has a telephone quality to it, but it's like a band pass for the voice, so it just punches through everything. I don't know. I like his old 640 by 480 camera. I'm not complaining. Anyway, I was just sitting here catching up on that and going, kind of going through checking the resistors, comparing them side to side. And I found a, a 10K, uh, and I had to lift it out, which is measuring out of spec. So I'm going to change that. It'll probably make it worse. Well, I think that did it. I think that brought it up to spec. So on this channel, we have 4 volts. On the other channel, we have 3.63. Yeah. Just when you think you got it, it's but it it's not like that at lower volume. I think it's just inequity in the volume control itself now, tracking in the volume control. Like let's see, now we have two point five and two point seven. So now it's leaning the other way a little bit. So 2.7 
And I, I think I'm being hypercritical here. So that's pretty close right there. Uh, so yeah, now I'm slightly just leaning the other way. I think that's about as good as we're going to get it. Maybe I should change that other 10K resistor. It was about... Well, now the one I changed is 9.95, and that one's 10.5. You know what? It's good enough. It's not... I mean, if, if this was, like, worthy of, of being all that hi-fi, you'd replace all the resistors with the 1% the, uh, metal film. It's just, I think it's close enough. Now the thing is to test it and let it see if it drifts with heat. The other thing you can do is connect the meter from uh, left positive to right positive and then null it. So adjust the balance so you have the lowest voltage. Like I'm adjusting the balance now to the left, then the middle, then the right. So if I go all the way to the right, I get 2.166 volts all the way to the left little bit less so what we'll do is we'll just null it and then we'll let it sit for a few hours just running just seems like right about there just dead right about dead on i think we're good here to Two resistors and one bad capacitor. So I should probably write this all down because it's very confusing. So originally on the left channel we had a bad capacitor that was causing excessive gain. On that same channel we had a bad resistor that was introducing a bunch of noise and low gain. So once the capacitor was changed the gain went down below the right channel. The bad resistor cleaned up the noise and the low gain. Then we still had a gain imbalance. Then it went back the other way where now the right channel was lower again. So come back here, found inequity in this stage, the very first stage, and found a 10K that had gone up to 14K emitter resistor. So two bad emitter resistors one completely open capacitor and a bunch of other capacitors that were just yeah this thing needs a re-resistor new resistors are junk so just to show on the schematic this capacitor right here this eight microfarad that feeds back from the collector if you follow this it feeds back to that 10k to the base control and directly over here to the treble control. That was completely open. Okay, then we had a... Not a 33. We had a 68 that had doubled in value, which was that. These values are different on this schematic because this is a germanium set in the schematic. It's the same schematic it's just different values see the drop here 1.1 to 0.9 that's 0.2 drop that's germanium and then on the other channel on the other channel this 10k had gone up to 14 so yeah multiple issues on separate channels making a for a very confusing repair very hard to document in a video so I'm just, I got it covered with paper here. I'm just letting it run. We'll let it run for an hour or two. Hopefully it starts a fire. It's been sitting here running for, I don't know, three or four hours. And the voltage has, left and right, has stayed perfectly in balance. It hasn't changed at all. So I believe we can call this a solid fix. We'll get it back into the cabinet and let it run for a day or two. And... Uh, you know, after we get 10 hours on it, we'll see if it, it holds true to this. But uh, it's kind of a strange one. Bad resistors. Here's a good one. Only Chrysler, man. 2017 Promaster Amazon delivery van. Bolts broke off the motor mount. 
engine fell and ripped the upper radiator hose off. Let's see if I can show this. There's where the bolts go through, right there. You can see where it ripped right through the... You can see the bolt there where it's supposed to be. And then here's the upper radiator hose. Wide stereo. Say goodbye to your prostate with Farsiga. Sounding good. It's been on about five hours. And it's rocking, man. We're rocking some Farsiga. I gotta say, this thing sounds a hell of a lot brighter now. It just has a lot more punch. Sounds like it's alive. Sounds like it's had a, a too much caffeine. It sounds way better than it did.